lovely people welcome to my channel Josie here and this is it is Josie I'm glad to have you here hope you're all doing well I'd like to welcome my new subscribers you're welcome thank you for joining me here and for my old subscribers thank you for always tuning in and watching my videos and as promised today's video is going to be a better edition for so long and if I always realize that I forget to show you whatever I'm wearing and this is my very first make from the butter cell magazines i used to buy them for so many years but i never got the confidence to sew with them until the time i made this top this was from an issue i think august i could be wrong of 2019 i'll try to attach the number of the particular pattern it's a top pattern which i made using butter cell magazine it was a simple top i used a, a cotton lightweight fabric and it just has a strap to hold it in it was an easy so no no closures whatsoever and i think that's my recommendation for someone who is having a go at sewing from the butter style magazines to try a simple pattern and the good thing they indicate how simple it is on the pattern pieces and as i promised you in my sewing plans video that i was going to record a sew along of the butter this pattern that was pattern number 107 from the may issue yes from the may issue this one and this was an easy make it doesn't have any closures and I would recommend it for anyone, a confident beginner, anyone who can sew. And in this video, I'm going to record it, I think in two parts, I realized it was quite long. The first part of the video, I'm going to show you how to identify your size and actually how to identify the pattern pieces you need to trace off and also how I trace off the, my size and my patterns from the magazine. As you may tell, you always have to trace them off pieces like this. It looks like a maze. And I've had a few people tell me that they never know what to do. I know the lighting so bright. They never knew know what to do with the pattern magazines from Bada. That's what they look like. It looks like a maze. That's hard to understand. But I must say, it's not the hardest thing to sew with. And I'm going to take you through this. And we shall be making the pattern number 0107. And if, as you may tell from the lines drawing, I'll show it to you here. Because Bada never wants us to show their items it's a simple dress it has panels in the middle a middle panel as you may tell and the side one and this particular one comes with three quarter sleeves and it has straps or ties that you can use to cinch in the dress it's quite your free dress it depends on how you want to wear it but i would recommend this dress actually it has a lot of room in it within within so it gives much room for when you've had a nice meal and just don't want things crushing you so you can adjust it whatever you want and I found it actually to be more roomy and it gives you and I think I might take it in a little bit I'm not sure but let me see how I get along with it however I went for pattern number 106 which features short sleeves it's the same exact pattern however this is a quite a midi length one but it features short sleeves so I made this version the knee length one however with short sleeves let I take you through everything so and also I realized when I recorded the video I forgot to mention how you you find your sizes but if you go to the middle of the pages they show you which sizing they use and this is the page that would help you shows you the different sizes they show you women sizes women petite sizes then they also have women tall sizes men standard sizes infants boys and girls and this comes in handy for you to select your size but i never find that i have to change much i already saw up size 36 from this magazine 36 yeah that's this the size i saw up from this so let me take you to the sewing table and i show you how you dress off your pattern select patterns how i add seam allowances because all these patterns don't come with seam allowances okay let me take it to the table we're going to start off with choosing the the size we're going to use i'll try to bring it up close and we are going to make it from the border may 2021 and we shall be sewing up this dress that's number 107 number 107 i'll show you the lines rolling here are lines rolling got a front panel and then the side panels and it's the same at the back and as we may tell, the front panel runs at the back, so it's quite longer than the back ones. That's the side panels. I think it's gathered in the back. And I'm going to play around with the fabric and change the orientation of the stripes. So we're going to look at the pattern instructions to show us which pieces we need to cut off. And we have to remember that we are not using these sleeves. These sleeves are 
I think three quarters and they also come with a sleeve band if you can tell from the lines drawing there they've got a sleeve band so we are going to remember to trace off different sleeves if you're making my version and I will be using the short sleeves from 106 which is the same exact pattern and also the 106 it's same below the knee dress so we are going to go ahead to the instructions and read them carefully to follow what we need I'll try to bring the camera up close as to know what we need and you move over to the instructions and here at our instructions we are doing 106 no we are doing dress 107 and with one and they're telling us the pattern pieces we need for our 107 dress we need pattern dress pieces 36 no these are the sizes it runs from size 36 to size 34 and in bud i often sew up size 36 although i'm just 36 at the bust and the waist i should be 38 in the hips but because it's a, an airline dress really doesn't matter going a size down at the hips because i would rather not struggle with blending these many panels so i'm going to sew cut out size 36 throughout on the model it looks a little bit a few inches above the knees on the model it looks a few inches above the knees but it's drafted for a five six to height model i'm five four so with this i think it will come at my knee difference of two inches if that's exactly what it is so i've already listed whatever pieces i need you could go ahead and transfer all your details in a book and I've this is what I've written down in my book. I've written the pattern number and the pattern size I'll be using. This is the pattern size, this is the pattern number, the pattern size I'll be using. And I've gone ahead and listed all the pattern pieces and that are written here, really, it's exactly what is here, over here. But I prefer putting them in my handwriting because the features have made mistakes and don't cut the two pieces they ask of me. So the only change I've made is include the short sleeve and omit the long sleeve. Unless you write them down here, you might make a mistake. And I've also gone ahead and catered for all the details, whether I'm cutting that particular pattern on the fold and how many pieces of each pattern I'm making. This, I think, is quite helpful for you to know. And just another note that I'll need to add interfacing to pattern pieces 24 and 35. If that's clear so I've listed all the pattern pieces I need to trace off and also one key thing that we need to look at over here before you trace out your pattern you want to know because the border magazine this the sheets from the, the pattern sheets were already taken out and cut in half and just cut it's a big sheet that you remove from the middle of the magazine so over here they tell you actually on which sheet your pattern pieces are and for our dress, the 107 is on sheet B. And also they've told us the color of our pattern lines. And our pattern lines will be red pattern line, if that's clear. And also we they've told us which pattern pieces we need to cut off. But because I've changed up the sleeves, so I won't be cutting off the sleeve piece and the hem band and the sleeve band. So those I will omit. I've already included them in my book. All that I will need for my pattern. And I know, and I've, I can still go back to the pattern 106. That's the short sleeve. So I included the numbers that I need. And I also know how many of each I will need. And it will also help me know that some sides will be on the fold. So I don't need to add interfacing. I don't need to add seam allowance to it. Just in case you're wondering, but the patterns don't come with seam allowance. You have to do that yourself. You have to add it manually onto it. So let me take it to the pattern pieces and we select our pattern. To stress off our patterns, we are going to need something to stress with. I love using this grease proof paper. I buy it in bulk and it's quite wider than the small sizes you buy in the shop. I buy this off eBay. It's quite wide. It's not the widest. It might not cover all patterns, but unfortunately you can't use cello tape to cover it. So I use staplers to where it doesn't fit. And also I use a ruler. This is a flexible ruler which makes stressing off and adding seam allowance much easier. Then of course pencils. Yeah. And also a pattern piece. Just like we've been told, we are going to use pattern piece B. They come in a big sheet and one side has the D, then the other has 
A and C, which I cut off at this middle line, and I didn't cut off any pattern. So we know all the patterns we need are on pattern piece B. And we've listed each individual pattern that we need to trace off. We could go ahead and probably trace off the first one, and we know the first one will be number 21, and we shall be cutting it to at this. That's the center front, and we shall be cutting it to, to be cut on the fold, and we just need one piece of that. So let me show you how you go ahead and identify the exact pattern you need. This is a pattern sheet. They've told us we are working with braid pattern lines and we are going to cut off, trace off pattern piece 21. And I'll try to bring the camera up close so we can follow. So when we come to the edges, at the edge of all the patterns, there are numbers which represent the pattern number pieces. And we are going to cut out 21. I've decided to circle around with a pencil the pattern pieces I need. And this is pattern number 21. And now that we see 21, it's just 121 across there. So we go ahead and find where 21 lands. So you follow where I, wherever they marked it. And it points us to this point. It's at this point that we see 21. And I'm cutting out size 36, which, which helps me that it's the smallest. So I cut the smallest line. So now we try to follow. It is not the easiest. I'm going to do something a friend of mine, Hila from Saturday Night Stitch Heads doing. That's highlighting over the patterns, but I'm going to do it for the benefit of this tutorial to show you how you follow along with this pattern piece. Now that we've identified 21 here, so we're going to follow the pattern piece and see where it goes. So 21 is over here. I'll try to pull it further. So we can all follow. So 21 is over here. I'm going to use the highlighter to help you identify it. Now that we see 21, we can see where it runs. It runs from here. Then because I'm using 36, it's the smallest, then it runs down here. So you try to follow that one line. For starters, I think if you want to be able to follow it, I'm going to highlight it for all of us to follow that particular pattern piece. This is 21. I'll highlight it here. I know the highlighter is going to show through at the bottom. I know there are some pens, pens that are easy and they're erasable. But I've gone with the lighter one. Hope it won't be a big deal. I'm just going to highlight just this one pattern piece. The rest I'll be able to follow, but I wanted you to follow from this. Hope you can see the highlighted bit. We are following here. 21 which will help us know which one to trace off when we need to when we are ready to trace off. This button piece 21 still goes on up to the very bottom here. Yep, we can tell 21 runs up to here and over here. And it's also here. It's quite a narrow long piece. But I think this is the center front panel. We try to straighten it. I don't bother ironing it because I want it to easily fold back in the same shape it was pre-folded. And yeah, we've traced off our pattern piece. It's a long piece. That's if you can follow nicely. So if you may tell, this is 21 that we've highlighted. I don't know if it's coming off on the camera. Yep. You can tell from the highlight it's a long piece runs from here up to there so we are going to it tells us that it's cut on the fold so we can tell the sizes the other size is size 38 follows here so this side will be cut on the fold and sometimes there are also words that tell you that it's center front yeah the words are here they show you us that this is center front straight grain so this will be cut on the fold so we shall make sure that we remember not to add seam allowance to this and also at the bottom here, this is the bottom, and we shall also have to add hem allowance at the bottom here. So we are going to go ahead and press off that one piece. And we see how easy it gets comes together. You also need pattern weights. I didn't mention that. I'm going to save this this pattern. I mean, I'm going to save the tracing paper by actually aligning this to the fold because it's a straight line a fold straight aligning it to the straight to the fold line so in so doing i don't bother cutting it out making my work much easier but i also want to leave enough 
for about an inch for the hem or three quarters whatever you want to use for your hem but align it that it matches so my pattern sheet is a bit wrinkly there but you try to manipulate it it's whatever works for you so i'm going to use it that way and i've got my trusty pattern ways these are rocks i picked up at the beach last summer which is a tip i still learned from my friend saturday night stitch i saw many many rocks in our sewing room gave me a brilliant idea for what to do the next time i visit the beach so i'm using those for pattern weights and holding down the pattern pieces and aligning them along the fold line since i won't need to add any seam allowance so i'm aligning it to the cutting line However, I need to shift it more so it fits. It's quite a long piece. You can do it in parts or if you trust yourself to do it well. I might have to cut off the pattern, the paper at this point because it will roll down. You can use whichever pattern weights which really work for you. It's no rule. What to use as long as the pattern pieces don't shift while you trace them off. Because that will be a bit sad. Want to align it to the fold line, as you may tell. Yeah, I think I've managed to align it up. And we can see a trace a line here, even without the highlighting, I'll be able to follow along. And it helps that this pattern piece that we are tracing off is pretty much straight. So I will be using my ruler to trace off most of the bits, pieces of this pattern. At this point, I'm not adding any seam allowance. I'm just tracing off just the piece I need. Then it's when I'm done that I'll label it and also add seam allowance. And it's good to be consistent with your seam allowance that you don't add different seam allowances at different parts whichever works for you i've known of people who work with half an inch seam allowance but i'm comfortable with three eighths of an inch so that's what i work with it has helped me that this piece is straight pretty much straight so i could use my ruler to cut it out to trace it out And that's it we printed we traced off our first pattern piece you could go ahead and label it because it's important that you label it otherwise you will never know which one it was so we know which which pattern we are working with which is border 05 2021 pattern number 107 and this particular piece we've cut out is the center front center front and it's cut on the fold make sure you include the fold lines this will be helpful for you to know where exactly the fold line is sorry i'm using a pencil I'll try to use a sharpie for you for us to see but this is the fold line we are going to go ahead and add some seam allowance at the top on the side and also the hem allowance and the easiest way to work around it i'm using my trusty ruler and it's easier to add three eighths of an inch with a ruler. Try to pull it up close and let's see if it can make it easier for you. With this, I can tell this is three eighths of an inch, or five eighths of an inch, half an inch. Hope it's clear. Yeah, with this ruler, it's easy to do that. So I'm adding three eighths of an inch because it's my go to seam allowance, it's what I love to use. Just find that 5 eighths of an inch is quite too much fabric wasted. As you may tell, I'll try to get the white paper to put at the back. Lastly, let's see what I know we're working with. Yeah, I've added some seam allowance there, as you may tell. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, a lot on the side also. And it helps that we are working with straight lines with this pattern piece. It's much easier to just align the ruler to the pattern piece yeah. 
Then for the hem, we shall see how much we have left. Let me just put a plain piece of paper here. So I've added some allowance to the side seam. We have to remember that the, this other side will be cut on the fold, so we don't need to add any seam allowance. And we're doing it to this side, just to this side. So hem allowance, I know I didn't leave enough space. I didn't leave an inch, I left less than that. So we shall go with three quarters of an inch for the hem. And I have to remember to keep it consistent at all pattern pieces to just keep that one standard hem allowance so this is hem allowance three quarters you could go ahead and mark it off and seam allowance three eighths of an inch if you think you will forget to write it on the pattern piece so we've cut up our first pattern piece we've traced it off you could go ahead and cut it up but i tend to wait to cut it up until like i, I use the rest of the grease proof paper to cut up the smaller pieces and yeah I'm also going to take you through tracing another pattern which is not as straightforward as a line, a straight line as this. Let's find another pattern piece to trace up. Then I'll show you how I add passing allowance to that. And don't forget to tick off whichever pattern piece you trace off in your not, notebook. So we've traced off this and we shall be cutting just one of these and on the fold. You could go ahead and trace off that's the side front. That's pattern piece two and a half. And as you may tell, there are pattern pieces that tend to come with A and B. Let me show you over here. We have 23. We shall be tracing off 23 later. And it's clear when you see A and B, it's a sign that the pattern piece was pretty big to fit onto one sheet. So what Bada does, they cut it into two pieces. No, actually, that's going to be our 22 when we are working on 22. It's also cut out on 22B and 22A. I'll show you how to cut out that. In so doing, the pattern piece ends up being so big that they can't lay the entire piece on one page, that they go ahead and cut it up into pieces. And with that is shown here in the pattern pieces, that 22 will come in two pieces, A and B. So with that, you actually line it up. You make sure you don't add any seam allowance at that point. You just line them up and cut them up as two pieces. So because I'm using greaseproof paper, I'll staple them along the line because cello tape doesn't work on greaseproof paper. But at least it's a reminder for you to know that you will actually be cutting off two pieces. That's 23, 22A and 22B. And at that point, you don't add any seam allowance there. So you could go ahead and trace off 22. And probably that will be it with the tracing off. So we could start with 22A. So we can identify the number is here, 22A. This is our 22A. We should go ahead and look for it along this line. And here is 22A. And it's showing us how it's running. We have it running from here. Going up. We just have to follow the lines. It's running from up here, going up here. Don't think we can follow from this point. Then it runs up to here. This is still 22A. There are so many inter intersecting at this point, but it's important to know what you're working with because from the pattern piece, you can tell which exactly shape it should be taking because it's the side front panel, I believe so. Then it comes down here, over here, comes down here over here then it comes down here i'm not going to highlight this particular one because the highlighter bleeds through the other opposite direction and i don't want to mess up the other pattern pieces we are struggling to see this because it has the the highlighter the shaded pattern piece that's the one for the tutorial in the magazine they shade it in a deeper color but if i was tracing anything from d d doesn't have the deep pink shaded back so if at all this is your first time sewing butter cell magazines helps to sew up the one that has come as a tutorial because the pattern pieces are also shaded for you to follow nicely so let's go ahead and trace off say 36 from that and i'm wishfully hoping that it will fit onto my piece without needing a wider piece because i want to be economical with my pattern pieces but let's see how that all goes. I want to be defeated at my own game. Because you know the pattern piece comes from here. 
it goes on up to here so we still have enough space and we have to allocate for seam allowance and make sure that's accommodated for yes it will fit and this won't be cut on the fold so we have to make sure we are leaving enough space for seam allowance at all points yeah we can see a pattern piece at this point the more you do it the more you easily actually recognize your pattern pieces and honestly, I'm not going to take you through the tracing since I've shown you the other point, but I'll show you once I've traced it all and how I add seam allowance to it. We've traced off pattern piece 22. I've tried to put a white paper in the background so it's clear. We've cut off pattern piece 22. And as you may tell from our lines drawing over here, the pattern piece 22 is the size, is the side front side. And as you may tell, it runs from the front up to the back. So it's quite a long piece. It comes up to the back shoulder, past the shoulder. If you can tell, it's what forms the gathers. So it's quite a long piece that it couldn't fit on the pattern piece. So when I was tracing it off, I had to trace off two pieces. There was 22A and 22B, and this is 22B. I hope the light is not so bright. So what we are going to do, they tell us on the instructions, to glue the pattern piece at this point i tried to indicate it on the pencil sorry the light is so bright so i'm going to go ahead and actually step all these two together you try you make a, you make sure that you don't forget adding the grain line because the grain line helps a lot at this point so i'm going to go ahead and step it onto this unfortunately cello tape would be the ideal of glue but glue doesn't stick or too grease proof paper my glue that I use, I use a glue stick. So I instead step it onto here. But whatever works for you, if you're using a paper that you can easily cello tape, perfect. But before that, I need to first add seam allowance all around. This is quite a long piece. I'm going to add seam allowance all around. And I remember to also add three quarters of an inch of hem allowance. And that's still easy. You just eyeball, it doesn't have to be straight really as because now this is a bit curvy and you just get a point that you mark off while you add seam allowance i'm adding three quarter of an inch for my hem and last for my hem allowance most of the work is with cutting off the cutting out the patterns but with time i, I equate these two printing off patterns and also if i was going to use an a0 pattern piece so a paper pattern I would still need to trace it off so either way I'll still be tracing something so I've added the hem allowance there and this piece is not cut on the fold so I need to add seam allowance to all the pieces and it helps that these lines are rather straight they're not the most straight of lines but you can just manipulate it as you go But we have to remember we are not adding any seam allowance to the pattern piece that will be joined on to the other. We've added seam allowance to the piece B, which we need to add onto the piece A, as you may tell with the white background. So we are going to go ahead and do the same at this point. As you may tell, these are curvy lines. It might seem a bit tricky, but honestly, you don't have to be really exact. You can do whatever makes sense for you. So I'll just go ahead and wing it more or less. It won't be exact. I'll try to bring it up close and this is what I'm doing. This is at the curved line. So I'm going to just try and find, mark off as many points as I can. A 3 8 so I could... 318. I'm adding seam allowance at this point. There are people who add seam allowance when they are tracing off. In other words, they don't trace off the exact size. They are located for where probably. I know I know one who uses half an inch and she just traces off the next big size. The size bigger than her own and she knows that allocates for the half an inch seam allowance. However, I don't do that because I won't remember to use the half an inch seam allowance. So with this, you vaguely trace over those markings you put. And those will accommodate for the seam allowance. Hope that is clear. So I'll go ahead and add seam allowance all around. 
and then I'll staple it together and I probably don't need to show you that part because what I'm going to do after I've added seam allowance everywhere I'll staple it together and then cut out my pieces at the seam allowance and yeah I'll probably take you to the table when I'm ready now to cut out the pattern pieces but the important thing is not to forget drawing out your grain line because that's the only way you will know how to position your pattern pieces okay as you may tell I've traced off all my patterns added seam allowance have about eight pattern pieces cut out this particular pattern has seven pieces but I decided not to trace out the tie bands because they are just your go-to rectangles and what I did I went ahead looked at the at the pattern pieces measured the tie bands plus the seam allowance so I got my dimensions that I need to cut out so I'll be using three inches by 24 inches that's for the width but you can do whatever is easier for you if you think you would forget the tie bands if you don't trace them out go ahead and trace them out although they are just rectangles I don't know if you can focus it's just this the tie band is in pencil so I know that and I'll be cutting two of them and probably one I don't want you to make the same mistake I made it wasn't a fatal mistake really per se because the basic thing the very first piece second piece I traced out that was number 22 which was the side front I traced it out and I immediately and that's the part which I had to trace in two portions because it was too long to fit on the page so they, they give you 22a and 22b and when I traced out the second piece and I traced out this very piece I noticed that it was quite long longer than I would imagine a knee length dress would require then I had to go back and look critically on the pattern pieces that's when I noticed let me put the paper underneath put the paper underneath for us to easily see it's when I went ahead that I noticed sorry it has been wrinkled because I've been laying them overnight somewhere that's when I noticed that actually the long one was for 106 that's the dress I showed you so I realized actually it showed number 106 which is for this dress the long one and we know we want a shorter piece they they don't put them as separate pieces because they are exactly the same but one is longer so I had to look critically then I noticed the cut line for the 107 because so now that's something to keep in mind that if it's a similar dress you're likely to come across the two pattern pieces the two dresses on the same pattern piece so you have to make sure that you look for actually the length you have you need to question your pattern pieces so it made sense for me to go back and look critically because it was confusing me a bit i didn't seem to see the line until i paid extra attention that i noticed it had the 106 written at the hem then i later paid attention to the lines it really helps if you're starting off with border style magazines that you highlight the pieces like i've shown you to make sure that you don't miss out each and everything so i'm going to go ahead and cut it down here i've already added seam allowance and from the pattern pieces i realized actually the allocation for seam allowance they had included was for seams border in the case that you add 1.5 centimeters which is 5 eighths of an inch i find 5 eighths of an inch quite big a seam allowance and i find that it's wasting a lot of my fabric because in so doing, if you're going to add that amount on each and every piece of fabric, you could save that. And then also they recommend that you use 4 centimeters. that's 1, one inch and 5 eighths of 1 inch for, a seam allowance, for the hem allowance. But I still I also find that quite much. I use 4, 3 eighths, 3, three fourths of 1 inch, that's 3 quarters of 1 inch for my hem allowance. That's pretty on the narrow side. I was being a bit stingy. I would recommend probably go with uh an inch of hem allowance because what i typically do i just finish the hem with my overlocker then i fold it down once but i think they accommodate for a, a double hem if you you don't have to, an overlocker to use and you want to first fold it down fold it down again then you could use the one the four centimeters seam allowance recommended in the pattern pieces but the important thing is to mark up or to mark all your measurements that if should you need to sew up the same dress again you remember all the same allowances you used so i've gone ahead and marked up everything as long as you keep it consistent so right now what i'm going to go do i'm going to go ahead and trace and cut out all these pattern pieces like i said i'm going to make sure that the side pieces have the stripes running downwards then the front pieces the 
they will be running horizontal so we're going to i'm going to go ahead and cut them off off camera because i know at this point by the time you want to sew up with butter cell magazine patterns you've sewed up with a number of patterns so you've cut up fabric so i won't show you that bit but i'll come back to you after i've cut them off and we shall sew the dress together that's it with our part one where i've shown you how i've identified my sizes cut them up trace them off and cut them up actually trace them off then cut them off and then i'll go do cut out my pattern pieces offline because it's a lot showing you how to sew them because i wasn't sure i needed to place the panels very well on the pattern pieces so i had to lay it on the floor so that i can have a better idea of how to match up the the stripes so i'll do that off camera okay tune in for part two